uh, I'm a geographer that has worked with a lot of different tasks, for example, Inspire Me implementation and uh, data modeling, and as a data project manager and so on. The pre uh, last three, four years, I've been working at the National Land Survey of Finland, helping um, data providers and users to get uh, fluently ac access to spatial data sets and services that has been published in Finland. And my talk today is uh, focused on, on metadata and the ecosystem around it, how we work to improve the, the, the metadata and, uh, and how about this version update that is, that is taking place. So first about our meta, a few words about our metadata catalog. It's a service provided by us for all data providers in Finland to describe their spatial data sets and services. And it's um, the official Inspire Discovery service in Finland. We have uh, several uh, metadata templates for, for our users to use in um, three different languages, also multilingual ones. And this has been, this catalog has been based on GeoNetwork for over 10 years. And here you can see, see that we have um, over 150 organizations that are using it and the, the size of the square expresses how much many metadata they have published with the service. Of these, um, um, around 650 are Inspire metadata and uh, a little bit more of, of the metadata as a number describes open data. In some cases they're the same, but some cases they're different. So it's wild, widely used. And the national system works like this. We, we ourselves at the National Landsway harvest from existing other metadata catalog that the Finnish Environment Institute, the Finnish Metrological Institute and Helcom have. They have some, some um, metadata that they want us to have. For example, all the Inspire metadata ones, and then they have their own systems. And from us, the data goes further on, or the Inspire metadata part is going further on to the Inspire geoportal, and we are using the whole metadata asset in our OSCARI-based portals, such as the national Geo portal, so there you can search on any, everything we have on this um, 1,800 metadata. We also use it in a house, for example, to to um, so there's a link between. We are using the CSW for um, having the dis product descriptions embedded on our, web our website. So it also is based on this CSW. And uh, well, anyone is free to use, use the, the open CSW and, and a big user is, is the open um, data portal. And um, a cl let's take a close look at uh, our cooperation with the open data portal. We actually pre-filter our CSW with a keyword so that they, we have uh, virtual services providing, providing only uh, metadata with that keywords. And then they filter further based on license if it is, is uh, CC by for or public domain. And only those with the correct license are going further. And this is the work that we have done the, the previous work years and focused on getting the, this process and quality better. And then it's going further on to the data, um, the European version of the Open Geo portal. So then to my, my topic of today, I'm going to talk about two goals that we have set for, for our work in the last um, Yes, the first goal was uh, 
the transition to the newer version of the, the Inspire Metadata Standard. And um, we wanted to be reach technical compliance. It was also required by Inspire Monitoring as it has been. The Inspire Monitoring has been based on metadata since 2019. But we also really wanted to focus to improve the quality of the met metadata. We didn't only want to focus on, on, on the technical compliance, uh, but also to the quality and the reusability. And, and for this, you, you see there that we used, we used uh, XSLT scripts in Geo Network for everything that we could do in National Land Survey in, in advance for our data providers. And then, um, then we, to reach technical compliance, we also did need to do some manual editing and add some new required elements and key keywords. Some elements had to be expressed in a new way, for example, the, the license information, use and, and access constraints. There was a different way to express it in a new standard, so it had to be an, um, redone and uh, all uh, Big data providers, they, they, had, they could do this by, we, we sent them the validation reports and asked them to do, do the checks and, and with a bit of iteration, it worked very well. In addition, we really wanted them to check the links so that the links wouldn't go to the website of the organization but to a possible WMS and WFS to the services where you can either download the data or use the data and we put a lot of focus on getting this license information correct as we knew that this uh, open data directive was coming up. We, we also um, asked them to look at the keywords and add these open data keywords when, when needed and to mark the, the metadata not inspire if the, the new interpretation was that they are not according within the inspire directive. So, so these kind of quality things, I, I could talk about that quality for, for 10 minutes, but I don't really have time this time. So, but then to be honest, uh, uh, it's easier to, to make, or it's quite complicated to move from one standard to another, especially for the small data providers. And then we thought, well, how, how are we gonna meet this goal, really? We are not gonna meet it if we just make a news item on our website that you should go and, and, uh, and update your metadata. So we thought that, how could we help them? And then we developed uh, in late, uh, 2021 uh, process for that, that was um, used on, we used um, also the CSW, uh, CSW for that. And um, like the get records, we, we made a process where, where for the small municipalities and regions, we took one region at, or municipality at a time, took a backup copy and did all the semi-automatic processing in, in ge geo network with the XSLT scripts. We did that for them. And then we compiled an Excel, and it was uh, done as an XSLT XML to CSV file. And then we only took the elements that we really wanted them to focus on. So it was a maximum of uh, seven columns in the Excel check these or add these missing elements and we tried to make it as simple as possible for them. And then we, they returned the Excel to us and we did the editing for, for them and the validation and were in contact with them if there was problems with something else than these five to seven elements. But uh, this worked really nicely and the team we had here, uh, I more or less developed the process, and then I had uh, a coder, a, a good colleague of mine, Yari Reini, that many of you probably know, who, who then did the, the, when I had made the XSL, the, the queries, get, get records queries, he made a small program for us. So, because we thought with a theme like this, I can't just 
get them, ask them to, to do working XML spy. So he made, made a small program for us so that we could make the first and the, the, the third box could be done by, by just adding the name of the data provider, the name of the municipality. So, uh, and then uh, we had three others. We had the trainee with us for four months and my two of my colleagues involved. So, and we hadn't really, <laughs> hadn't really a, a way to check that how are we doing, but we then got the result of the monitoring in, in 2020 of, of the results from December 2022. So you see a good improvement, but of course it's not 100%, so we, weren't, we are not happy. The trend is there, and we had this for a long time, uh, where had been aware about this bulk validation tool that we really wanted to use, but it was impossible to, to, inter to use it on, on our national land server lap laptop. But then um, somehow we, we got our managers um, convinced that we can get a richer con computer to have a separate computer for, for installing the bulk val validation tool. And, and uh, yeah, my, my colleagues in the NOSIN and Yari again <laughs> did some fine tuning of that. And we, we set up another process that we used last year. We use the same kind of elements as, as the previous process. Here we, we gave the data providers, also the national governmental state, that the possibility to, for us to check all their metadata. And then uh, the, the lower box expresses that before the Inspire um, monitoring date, we also checked all Inspire metadata ourselves and then Check, could, could um, find out in which um, metadata, Inspire metadata, there still were, were some problems that it was not according to standard. And we gave the opportunity to the data provider or corrected by ourselves if the corrections were purely technical. And then for this, it was myself and, and Yari. Yari installed the computer for, for, for me and, and uh, we were then able to identify, you see there in column G, the, the errors that were, and the, in uh, the first column A, you have the data provider name, so we could identify where the problems are. And, uh, and now, thanks to this tool, we are up to, to these figure, good figures for last year. So, happy with this. <laughs> yes, so let's go to the second goal. I'll sum up all the lessons learned in the end. So we, the second goal was to, to do a transition from, from the network three to four by June this year. And we chose to go with version 4.2. And we started last year. We had a lot in place already in May, but then came things up with the IT theme, so they had to to focus on other things, and we start restarted last December, and we with a new version of the Postgres EDB database and a new installation. So then we lost all the configurations, and uh, but um, and then we continued to work with the issues that we had not yet investigated last year, like how do we really replace the virtual services that we had have in uh, GN Network 3 because virtual services are not, you're not uh, able to build them. And, we, and the, our cooperation with both open data and, and on the website was, was based on that. And can we get all the 50 plus harvesters that we have to work when we harvest from other portals? And do we fail, face issues with uh, the new CSW or does it work as we, we, we hope to? So first, um, a few words about the about ex, ex, um, uh, replacing the virtual services with the sub portals. That was a really, really nice. <laughs> no, no problems whatsoever. It's uh, with sub portals you pre-filter the metadata, for example, by keyword, and you can even you can have uh, you can decide to publish 
like a set of your metadata, set of your metadata portal for, and here's in the picture you have only the Inspire metadata. So it could be a useful tool also for our users to, to check do they really have all the Inspire metadata there. So, and uh, we of course tested it with, with, uh, with our key, key partners. And it was easy to implement. Some, it took me some while to figure out this uh, loosening expression. There's not so many examples out there, but the idea was to filter one sub-portal that only showed the, the data, the, the data, um, um, the data set metadata of National Land Survey Finland to filter out all the service metadata. And we succeeded in that, and we see it succeeded in, in getting it to our web page. What then we, we faced that was not so nice, what, and we were not aware about that in advance, was that the CS. Uh, W get the main request is not supported in EGN Network work version 4 in, the, in Elasticsearch. And we really have made use of that in our metadata search in, in our Oscari product, for example, in this uh, National Geo portal. So it means that we will have, uh, well, Oscari coding is on our hands, so we will deal with it somehow. And uh, the question mark is there is how to solve the lack of, of the, the support. Well, I have colleagues now in the IT team thinking about it at the moment. So here we are, we didn't reach the goal, but we are a long way. We have uh, that jet to get the main issue to solve, not to lose the metadata search in our geo portal. And then we have some small uh, National Land Survey specific configurations to put in place. Well, we. Uh, what's the next step then to to make the update? Of course, we hope to do it in in after summer break, and, but we need to have a, a plan or a replacement for for this uh, lack of get the main request. And of course, um, the grass is always greener on the other side that we really, <laughs> we realized on the way that there were things that we thought would have been in version 4.2 that actually are just in version 4.4 and things like that with the, the OGC AP records as a microservice, to my understanding, is only in version 4.4 and also the, there is work um, with this GeoDCAT AP. Some, and, um, and the security has been improved. So, uh, um, uh, quickly about the lessons learned. Um, I think this is, not, this is not the last version of my presentation. I had collected uh, the lessons learned from these bo both goals, but uh, I guess um, Patience, you have to have patience. If you have a lot of data providers and a lot of dependencies in your systems, you, uh, changes take time, but it's possible to, to make the changes. And our team working with metadata and validation, validating, we all now know a lot, so we don't have the person dependencies that we had three years ago. So we're in, in a very uh, good position and also we can we, we have better templates and user guidelines so we can support users in a much better way this is related to goal one and then when it comes to to goal two well it is uh, it is slow to take a new version into use mainly re, uh, related to the dependencies but we have also a lot of of configurations that we have done to our templates and to the user interface. And it was also challenges, the same IT team is working with a lot of services. So we, even though we had a, had a really good plan for this autumn, there was always surprises and priorities and you had to, yeah, which service they are focusing on. And the help of community 
was very useful, especially this nothing group that we had a meeting with once a month this spring. And of course, uh, after being uh, clever afterwards, that should we could we have used the network more? Would we be uh, would we have reached our goal already? Of course, the get uh, get domain issue would still there, but I don't think we have been so act active with the Transifex project, for example, and using this um, this. Um, uh, email lists that are, are available. Relying on, on our own documentation, more or less, and on this NOSIN work. But thanks, that was my presentation. Very good, thank you, thank you so much. I think, um, um, I don't know if I can say this, but I think on, on behalf of all Estonians, uh, the Finnish open data activities are always, have been an inspiration of, of uh, how this has been managed and, and how much data was already available. So thank you. Questions? Thanks for the presentation, really interesting. So um, I was wondering, um, when you apply this XSLT from the 1.3 to the 2.0 uh, metadata record, um, don't you then step in the, in the role of the, of the data provider that should be doing that? I mean, how was this governance managed? Yeah, we, we kind of uh, get asked them, do, do they want to do this job themselves or do they want us to do it, the small municipalities? There were around 100, 100 of them, so, so, and, uh, so we got kind of the mandate from them. And um, the benefit we got, we got a lot of users, we got a, a awareness of the portal and uh, we also had these meetings for those that really wanted to learn themselves. So it was not always that we were doing it. Sometimes they, they took the ball and did it. And, uh, and um, yeah, because it's it. So yeah, we were thinking about it, but we had, we had our goal and we improved our documentation and so on. So kind of we stepped, but it was a helping hand and many took it. Anybody else? Okay, thank you very much.